This is Christopher John Bjergnes. It is May 17th, 2024. A painting was recently revealed of King Charles III, and it has caused quite a stir. Uh, people are trying to figure out what it means. Uh, they're immediately struck by the strong presence of reds, which indicates blood and warfare and colonialism. And what it really represents is the kingdom of Edom. The Hebrew word for red is Edom. And Edom is spelled Aleph, Dalet, Vav, Mem. Adam, as in, <clears throat> as in Adam and Eve, is spelled Aleph, Dalet, Mem. So what we have is Adam in his female aspect of Eve being infused with the seed of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. The letter Vav is also the number six, and it is a pictogram of the serpent in the Garden of Eden who impregnated Adam, Aleph Dalet Mem's female aspect, Eve, with his own seed to produce the child Cain. The soul of Cain was reincarnated into Esau, and Esau is the father of the Edomites. So how does that relate to King Charles? Well, when I saw the painting, uh, my immediate impression was that it is painted in the style of Giuseppe Archimboldo, and it represents uh, King Charles III as Herod, both Herod the Great and Herod Antipas. In the New Testament, both Herods appear, and in several paintings by Giuseppe Archimboldo and those who painted in his style, they incorporated the massacre of the innocents into his face. And you can see how this painting of King Charles appears to also replicate that style of incorporating the massacre of the innocents into King Charles' face and hands. You see all the little babies, uh, all the boys under age two that Herod the Great, Herod the First, ordered be massacred in, uh, in his quest to kill off Jesus Christ before Jesus Christ could threaten his kingship with Christ's own kingship. So that's some of the imagery that appears in the painting. There is also a very prominent monarch butterfly. King Charles III is obviously the monarch. The monarch butterfly representing the monarchy is an orange and black butterfly, and it represents uh, William of Orange, the Judaized uh, Dutch sovereign who may have been a Dutch Jew. The Dutch Jews uh, derive from the Spanish Jews who were chased out of Spain by Ferdinand and Isabella and held a tremendous grudge against the Catholic Church. So they worked with the Protestants and William of Orange to take over England and wage war on the Catholics. And the Irish suffered terribly as a result of this war and the British war against the Spanish. And this was all part of the Dutch Jews, including Manasseh ben Israel, who was earlier in the time of Cromwell and helped uh, fund and organize uh, Cromwell's revolution against Charles I and beheading Charles I in the way that the Noahide laws call for the beheading of Christian idolaters. Christian idolatry was reduced by the Reformation and William of Orange was a big part of uh, wiping out Catholicism in England and attacking the Irish Catholics and in uh, planting the nobility in Northern Ireland, which have caused the Irish people problems. 
ever since. Orange is also the color of Donald Trump. And the butterfly represents the metamorphosis of the king returning. So this symbolizes the return of Donald Trump as the second coming of Christ, as the monarch who will land on the shoulders of Herod. Herod Antipas, uh, the son of Herod the Great, uh, befriended Pontius Pilate, representing the Romans. He uh, donned Jesus Christ in a robe in the mock coronation of the substitute fool king, which was a hip Hittite scapegoat ritual, as I've explained in my books, uh, Rise Above the Gods Who Hate Us and Satanic Secrets of Jesus Christ. So all of this Christian portrayal of uh, King Charles as King Herod, uh, both King Herods of the New Testament, representing the slaughter of the innocents and the coronation of Jesus Christ as the monarch butterfly being the resurrection of Jesus Christ in his second coming as Donald Trump. Both Jesus Christ and Donald Trump are played the roles of Messiah, son of Joseph, of Cyrus, of Esau, and of Cain, who have the soul of the serpent letter Vav in Edom, which is a corruption of Adam to introduce into Eve the seed of the serpent, to spell Edom, Aleph, Dalet, Vav, Mem. Uh, when Jesus was interrogated by Herod at the behest of Pontius Pilate, he held his tongue. He did not speak. And that's uh, also involved in the relationship between America and England. America and England represent, as I've been saying again and again, the Leviathan, the sea serpent, the sea powers, the naval powers whose navy is now threatened by the hypersonic cruise missiles of the behemoth who is being pitted against the Leviathan as the Leviathan is pitted against the behemoth of the Eurasianist forces. The Leviathan, again, is the serpent, the sea serpent, Samael, Satan, the devil, the serpent in the tree in the Garden of Eden who tempted Eve and fornicated with Eve to produce Cain, whose soul passed along to Esau, the father of the Edomites. Uh, after this uh, interrogation by King Herod of Jesus Christ, where Jesus held his tongue and um, Herod put him in the robe so that he could play the role of the substitute fool king and be killed in the place of Jesus Barabbas. Jesus Christ is killed in the place of Jesus Barabbas. Jesus Christ was uh, scourged and beaten and punished and his beard was plucked out and his hair was pulled on because the Gentiles need to be scapegoated for the sins of the Jews. And part of scapegoating is that they endure the horrible punishment, which befits the Jews for their horrendous sins, but is instead inflicted upon the scapegoat, upon the Gentiles in the form of Jesus Christ and in the form <coughs> of the Edomites. The Edomites were initially converted Jews who were circumcised, forced to be circumcised, and they produced the nobility of Europe through the Romans by integrating with the Romans all the way through with all the corrupted bloodlines of converts to Judaism. And King Charles has been circumcised by a Jewish moil and is himself a Jew of the house of Saxa, Gotha Coburg, uh, which converted its name to the House of Windsor so that people would not realize that King Charles and his family are German Jews and ultimately converts to Judaism and Edomites as represented by the red of the painting. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to show and explain uh, all of this and the history of the art, which for me personally is very uh very significant. I've long been a fan of Giuseppe Archimboldo and another artist who is very famous in Chicago. Many of his paintings have been exhibited at the Art Institute of Chicago named Yvonne Albright. 
And uh, this stylistic lineage from Archimboldo to Yvonne Albright to uh, Jonathan Yeo, uh, I think is significant. And I think it's a direct line of this style. And this style, cleverly perhaps, I don't know whether he was inspired by this or not, but this is clearly what I see in it, that um, this uh, portrayal of King Charles as King Herod with the innocence, the massacre of the innocents born in his face and hands is very much in line with Archimboldo, those who, uh, his students who painted in his style as in the instance of this portrait. And I think Ivan Albright was also influenced by uh, Giuseppe Archimboldo. If not, it's a, it's a tremendous coincidence. So this is the painting of Charles and uh, You can see the innocence perishing in his face. You can see the monarch butterfly representing William of Orange. There are many oranges in the painting. The orange also represents, in my opinion, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the second coming, the metamorphosis of the butterfly of Jesus Christ, of Messiah, son of Joseph to lead the Gentiles into ruin, to subvert the Gentiles of the Atlanticist powers of America and Europe for the benefit of the Eurasianists, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, um, Kim Jong-un, so the uh, primarily the Russians, Chinese, and North Koreans, so that they destroy NATO, destroy the West, and primarily destroy England and Great Britain and the United Kingdom and the United States because the United States are Edom and uh, they are the descendants of the Romans, descendants of Pontius Pilate, descendants of the friendship of the Edomite king Herod with Pontius Pilate who have to be completely annihilated down to the last man, woman, child, infant, and fetus according to the Old Testament over and over again, it, it expresses the commandment that the Edomites must be completely exterminated. Again, the Edomites represent the Atlantic sea powers, the naval powers of America and Great Britain, which are projecting their power in the Middle East at the behest of Israel so that they get consumed in a war with Persia. As I've been explaining, that is thousands of years old, this plan to bring America into a self-consuming war with Persia and destroy America. This plan is uh, set forth in numerous sources, including the prayer of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Zohar, the Sefer Zarababel, and many of the other apocalyptic uh, texts, especially of the medieval period among the Jews, which call for this war with Persia. Why Persia? Because Persia was the empire that defeated Cyrus and the Babylonians and restored the Jews to Palestine and enabled them to rebuild the temple of Solomon. So uh, Trump uh, is gonna come along and he's gonna help all of that. And then he's gonna help the Persians by fighting them to bring America into a self-consuming war that will also involve the behemoth, which will destroy the sea serpent of the Leviathan. This, I think, is a painting by uh, a student of um, Giuseppe Archimboldo in Giuseppe Archimboldo's style. And you can clearly see that the face of King Herod is composed of the infants that were slaughtered, just like King Charles' face is. Here is an actual painting by uh, Giuseppe Archimboldo. Again, you see the innocents um, composing King Herod's face in the same manner that they compose uh, King Charles. And here it is again, and you see the red over and over representing the fact that King Herod was an Edomite. Edomite means red in Hebrew. You see the bull horns or the golden calf. <clears throat> and as I've explained, that's 
representative of Egyptian mythology, of Zoroastrian mythology, of Mithraic mythology, Greek mythology. You see over and over again the bull horns of the moon, and it represents Samael and the Edomites. Here's a very clear depiction of King Herod as the red Edeumean, uh, the Edomite, with the satanic Samael pentagram and uh, the red face and the red robes and the sword, just like Charles has. Here again is uh, King Herod. He wasn't actually a king, but he's portrayed as a king in the New Testament. Herod Antipas, the son of Herod the Great, um, grilling Jesus Christ, interrogating Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ remains silent. The second coming of Jesus Christ is Donald Trump as Messiah, son of Joseph, and he will be uh, falsely coronated by uh, King Charles, the new King Herod. So we have King Herod, King Charles. We have Jesus Christ, Donald Trump, the monarch butterfly, the new king, landing on the shoulder of Herod to be given a robe to wear <clears throat> in his mock coronation so that the Edomites are destroyed and the Jews rise as the only ones to survive the war between the Leviathan and the behemoth. Here again, we have King Herod in red. King Herod in red. King Herod in red with the red beard and the red hair of the Edomite people, much like Donald Trump's uh, hair, the way he uh, grooms it these days. I don't know if he dyes it or not, probably he does. Here again, King Herod in red and the slaughter of the innocents, which we see in the face of uh, both uh, Giuseppe Archambolo's paintings, and I believe uh, I see it in the uh, painting by Jonathan Yeo of uh, King Charles III. So King Charles III was uh, circumcised by a British, a Jewish British mole, uh, circumcised King Charles. The uh, family of King Charles are German Jews who changed their name to the House of Windsor to conceal the fact that they are German Jews. Um, there was uh, some web pages I had lined up so I can run down some of these facts. So there was uh, Herod the Great who massacred the Innocents, which is uh, the theme that's portrayed again in the face and hands of Charles, just as they were in Giuseppe Archimboldo and his students. He was a very important figure in the New Testament, and he often gets confused with his son, um, Herod Antipas, uh, all descended from Antipater, Antipater, um, his father, Herod the Great, was alleged to have ordered the massacre of the innocents. So when we see portrayals of both of them, this figure is prominently in it. So uh, they are, their soul is integrated in the minds of Kabbalists. You can see in this painting of the massacre of the holy innocents looks very much like the face and hands of King Charles and in the uh, portrayals of Herod by Giuseppe Archimboldo. Luke chapter 23 verses 6 to 16 talks about what I was saying about this interaction when uh, Pontius Pilate found out that Herod was in Jerusalem, and since Herod was the king of Galilee, um, Jesus fell under his jurisdiction. So um, Pilate uh, passed Jesus off onto Herod, uh, who's called in the New Testament the king of the Jews. Jesus was accused of trying to be the king of the Jews, which would be an affront to uh, Herod Antipas, 
who was uh, said to be the king of the Jews in the New Testament, but he could find no fault in Jesus. He grilled him. Uh, Jesus did not respond. So he put Jesus in a robe to coronate him as the substitute full king so that Jesus Christ would take on the sins of Jesus Barabbas and be executed in the place of Jesus Barabbas as the scapegoat and the substitute full king. He would bear the punishment just as they're gonna put us all through hell if they get our way so that we all become the scapegoats for the sins of these people. And very significantly, he also uh, befriended Pilate and Pilate befriended him. Uh, they were not friends until all this took place. This uh, represents the uh, penetration of the convert Jews, the Edomite Jews into the royalty of Rome, of Europe, which is represented very prominently by circumcised King Charles III, who is of uh, the House of Windsor, which is a fabrication, a fake title uh, that came about in 1917 in the middle of World War I when the Belfort Declaration was issued in exchange for the pledge to bring America into World War I on the side of the British to defeat the Germans so that uh, Zionism would triumph. And this was done, uh, this is said, so because there was a strong anti-German feeling, but it was more done to conceal the fact that uh, the British were ruled by uh, German Jews um, and that uh, the Balfour Declaration was issued by Arthur Balfour to Lord Rothschild, Walter Rothschild, by under the reign of German Jews. And they wanted to keep that fact concealed from the public because then they would realize that England was not serving uh, the British, but was instead serving Saxa, Coburg, and Gotha, who changed their name to Windsor to conceal the fact that they were neither German nor British, but were in fact Jewish, just like uh, Edom was married to Rome through uh, King Herod. This is uh, that famous Chicago artist I was talking about, Yvonne Albright. Um, his paintings very much uh, resemble the paintings of Jonathan Yeo, and I think are derived in part from the style of Giuseppe Archimboldo. Those of you who are like me, very interested in art, uh, we'll find the paintings of Yvonne Albright, very interesting, very grotesque, very morbid, very much in line with this uh, period that we are entering into of the apocalypse of the messianic age to be ruled by the Messiah, uh, the Antichrist, <laughs> Donald Trump, who is the monarch butterfly second coming, the metamorphosis of Christ landing to form the uh, power of the Leviathan serpent, Samael, Satan, of the Atlanticis, of the sea powers of Great Britain and America. And as I've said, this, these are the express terms that are used uh, in the Midrash, in Leviticus, uh, 13.3 of the Midrash Rabbah, it talks about this battle that they're going to stage between Leviathan and Behemoth, which Leviathan came to be Christianity, then the Behemoth was created in the form of Islam, and then Islam was uh, augmented by the creation of Marxism to form the Eurasianists, and they pit us against one another in a contest. They view it as a sporting contest, as their entertainment, so we consume each other, destroy the entire Gentile world, and leave only a remnant of Jews standing to inherit the world to come. And guess what? They view us as cattle, and not only as cattle, but as a food source, and as the Midrash Rabbah makes clear, and as the Talmud in... Um, Tractate Bhava Batra, folio 74 and 75, were to be eaten in their festival celebrating our mutual destruction in the beginning of the world to come. Uh, if you read through this, uh, it talks about how we're going to be consumed. I've 
found many other passages that talks about how our body parts will be sold in the marketplace, the way the Palestinians' body parts are being sold on uh, the organ market. And uh, that's what they have planned for us. So we're getting there. And uh, I even see it, whether it's intended or not, in the art of uh, Charles, King of England. And uh, I think that it's red to represent Edom. Uh, that's quite obvious. But the real meaning of Edom, uh, I'm the one who exposed that it represents Adam plus the serpent in the form of Eve copulating with the serpent in the Garden of Eden to produce Cain, who then produced the Edomites through Esau. And uh, that soul of Cain, Esau, Samael then gets passed on to Jesus Christ and represents the resurrection, the, not the resurrection, but the second coming of Christ in the form of Donald Trump, uh, the anointed Messiah, son of Joseph, like Cyrus. And we're going to have a war with the Persians coming up, probably. They're trying their damnedest to get it kicked off. And they want to wipe out the UK and America, the uh, Leviathan, so that the behemoth can triumph over us. Uh, I'd like to also very much thank my donors who made this video possible. I'm very grateful to you guys, and I'm very grateful to everyone who repost my work on Twitter. That's also extremely helpful. Uh, thank you, Carolus, Norbert, Federico, Umberto, Robert, Ad Alan Greenspun, Carolina, Paul, Donetta, Gregory, Bob, Lance, Bosma, Angelina, Jerry, Jeannie, Barry, Ali, Ryan, at John Garitis, uh, Anisha, Kelly, Mark, Kevin, Gary, Elton, Oliver, Kathy, Wilson, and George. Uh, I couldn't do it without you guys. And um, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope you like, share, and subscribe. Pass along the word about my work. Uh, please tweet about it. Um, I need to get more exposure to get the word out about all this. Uh, I'm the only one in the world who understands all this and can explain it. But uh, it does much more good if I can explain it to a larger audience. And I want to thank everyone who's been helping with that. Thank you very much. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you next time.